welcome back to a late show. Let's say hello to John Baptiste. John, John, you know, how are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling life right now. I'm feeling life. We're alive. That's a beautiful thing. We hello. are alive, and life is only getting more lively. Did you hear that today? How many? Many. At least half a dozen. At least a half a dozen Broadway shows announced their return to Broadway. Are we one oh. of them? Did we announce yet? But we're announcing hey. soon, right? We will know soon when we're coming back to the Ed Sullivan. John, I cannot wait to see you in person. I mean, Man, don't get me wrong. I can't I, wait. I dig That's the album. I dig the soundtrack to Soul. I enjoy yes. seeing you win your rafts of awards. But to be in the room when you and the band are playing is a whole other level. Oh, it's another level. It's about to be on fire. Come on, Broadway. Soon. Let us in there. Soon. Let's this is go. officially, I am declaring, this is an official announcement. We will be back in the Ed Sullivan Theater soon. Okay, you can hold uh -huh. me to that, and I will attempt to hold someone else to that. <laughs> All right? Yeah. John, yep. you, know who I'm you know who I'm talking to in just a minute? Oh, yeah, I know. Come on now. Michelle first Obama. Lady. The, 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 the original first lady. The, the original, yeah. actually. <laughs> the, the, yeah. the original. She is, a, she is an original, I will say that. Uh, do you That's have any right. music? Do you have any proper transition music from this moment to speaking Ooh. to such a, 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 a lovely uh, paragon? as oh, Michelle yeah. Obama. I hope she was listening. John Baptiste, oh, everybody. Thank you, John. Folks, as I alluded uh, just a moment ago with John Baptiste, I recently had the great privilege to go down to Washington, D.C. for an in-person conversation with the former first lady, Michelle Obama, in the very same room I interviewed her husband last November. Jim? Lovely to see you. I, I, I'm, I'm faced with one little challenge here, is that we've talked for years, mm -hmm. and I've always called you Madam First Lady. And I got an email from you about a year ago. You and this is, an, uh, this is an actual email. It says, my producer wrote an actual email at the bottom to prove. It says, hey, Stephen and Evie, great to hear from you both. And you definitely have to cut out the Madam First Lady stuff, <laughs> lol. So I just want to confirm here in front of the campus that you would prefer that I call you by your first name because I'm about to cross that it. Rubicon. It's like, please come, come over okay. to the light side. Well, you know, I, I, it's like the Madam First Lady. Okay. That's somebody else now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I'll give it a shot. Okay, I'll give it a shot. let's try it. Try it. Breathe in. Whew, okay. So nice to see you, Michelle. You did it. There it's you go. It's good to see you too, Stephen. I had the pleasure of sitting down with your husband uh, in November. Mm -hmm. And uh, I imagine that over the course of, of your life together, because you're both incredibly busy people, that there have been long periods of time, certainly for the eight years while you all in the White mm -hmm. House, because you didn't see each other as much yeah. as yeah. you'd like to. Over the last year, you've been together it's a lot. all the time. All How has that time. worked out? Are, you know, is he good company? He is. It is, it is good. And, and I think it's even better because we don't, the, the pressures that were there are also gone. They're different. Our kids are independent beings. We're not worrying about feeding them or curfew or all those things. But that they were make living with sense. you for a while they too, were, right? They were, but they're adults and it's sort of like, hey, you know, it's your life. So I it was mean, more like roommates exactly. than it was children. Exactly. Good company, good company. But it, it was, it's been lovely. I mean, we've, it, it, it's, we are, the friendship that that was the foundation of all of this is still there. Um, oh, that's why I like you. Right, that's, that's exactly. Hey, it's you like, turn out to be pretty good and company. And that's what I tell young people, young couples. It's like, yep. it's going to come full circle, especially if you have little kids and you're working, you have a career. You mm -hmm. look over at that guy and you're like, ooh, why did I do this? I don't even remember. You know, but you come full circle, kids are out of the house, and it's like, oh, you're kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we are now. It's like, oh, look at you in your little golf outfit. You know, he, he's all, when he goes to golf, it's like, oh, wow. mm, you look cute. <laughs> I feel it now. Yeah, so it's been good. Now, the kids, though, mm -hmm. okay, obviously, you love your children unconditionally. They love you. At what point the did they say to you over the last year, you guys, we love you, but you're a drag. We you know, get out of they here. haven't, they, they, they went to the West Coast and they've been gone. They just left. 
Did they leave a forwarding <laughs> they, address, or did they the, just... we know where they are? But uh -huh. they don't they don't check in much. So, uh -huh. but it's been almost a year, right? Mm -hmm. And um, in in the, the the height of quarantine, you know, well, let's say it started in March. By the summer, we were like, okay, that's enough of you. You know, I have nothing else to say. And our youngest, Sasha, who's not as mm -hmm. talkative as our older one, mm -hmm. is just like, I really have nothing to say to you. I really just don't. I'm not even trying anymore. Well, but we, we got through a couple of good months of feeling good uh, being around each other. You, your, your husband explained what a lot of people went through, which mm -hmm. is the kids are home, you know, there's movie night, mm -hmm. they're, 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 you're doing game puzzles, night. you're doing mm -hmm. games, stuff like that. Who made the call? On the movies, like who who would be who is the Malia? Veto? Malia is the movie savant. She's very clear. Although we all don't like the same movies, she and Barack like dark and sad. Oh. And Sasha and I, we want a little laughter and some Thank you. frivolity. Um, but they have to do important movies. You know, it seems like they take themselves a little seriously with their movies. Mm -hmm. You know, and they like mm -hmm. to rehash dark moments. I say Barack's taste in movies is. Everybody is sad and then they die. Those are, you know, so he has to be, I have to be careful. Sure. It's like, all that, this year's Oscar nominees. It, then. Right, right. Is that, it's he like, loved it. He recommends Let's it. write something light, light hearted. How about Judas and the Black Messiah? <laughs> you've talked about something, uh, experience you've had this past year with low grade depression, mm -hmm. you call it. And I have a two part question, which is one is, it's very, it's a very common for people this year, or very common mm -hmm. in general, but especially this year. How did you cope with it? And why just low grade? Mm. Because <laughs> like, I get not? the high octane. Massive. I get the high octane. Yeah, right, this year. right. Well, you know, over the, the the course of your life, as you know, it this is a part of life. You know, nobody rides life on a high, and I think it's important for young people to know that. You know, it's like, no, you're not going to feel great all the time, and there are moments in all of our lives, particularly in the middle of a pandemic, uh, and. Uh, you know, unrest, racial unrest, mm -hmm. you're gonna feel a kind of way about it. So give yourself a break. Um, being 57, I know that that's true. Uh, so over the course of your adulthood, you develop your own tools. And for me, it's turning off the noise that mm -hmm. is upsetting, you know, knowing that I can't keep reading all the feeds that are, you know, fueling my anxiety and mm -hmm. taking a break from it. I did that in as first lady. There were just times that I couldn't hear the bad news about the country that I had to serve um, because mm -hmm. I know that the news isn't a full reflection of what the country is. Um, and they if often I wanted need to... the bad news because the, uh, the, the drama of the story of the conflict is actually part of the business model. That's right, but it's not reality. It's not how people live their day-to-day -day lives. And so I pull back from it. Um, I, I surround myself with things that make me feel good, family, friends, walks, exercise. Um, so when I talk to my kids about that, I try to urge them to understand that the valleys are temporary and so are the peaks. They, they can be temporary and they have to be prepared to handle the highs and the lows. So I'm trying to get them and other young people to start thinking about what are your tools, the things that bring you joy, the things that bring you calm and peace. I know those things for myself now, but it's taken decades to develop those tools. So we have to be patient with ourselves, particularly in times that are hard, you the, know? The, the difficulty for me um, mm -hmm. is I know the things that'll actually make me feel better and I don't want to do them. Well, what? Well, what? That doesn't make any sense. Well, Stephen. no, because they, they they require you to do something, and oh, when I'm depressed, I don't, you want, don't to want to do, do anything. anything. That's part of the odd trap that's, of depression. You know, that's true. And well, for me, I have to push beyond that, right? So that's having a schedule, even in quarantine, was something that I did. I woke up, I took a shower, I worked out, I got dressed every day. You know, there wasn't a day that went by that I didn't do that because. It's just the doing that gets you out of the funk. You know, I find that if I spend a whole day in a sour mood, lights out, in the bed, the next day I'll feel the same way. But if I get up and I shower, something might happen in the course of me doing something that really knocks me into a positive place. So I try to fight the, the tendency to not, to, to, to sort of wallow in my low. You know what I'm saying? I do, I do know. I do Don't know that, wallow I in do your know low, that that's the right Stephen. thing to do. Open the blinds. Get out of bed. Come on. Just get up. Take a shower. Shave.
Can I get that as my alarm in the morning? Could we just get a copy of that? I could do have that. Have my iHome play that for me? Come on. You just said a, a moment ago that you're 57 years old. Yeah. I'm going to be 57 in a couple of days. Woohoo! You and I, um, uh, same age. Your husband is about to turn old. 60. They're, he's 60. A, he's an old man. As, you know, as a fellow Gen Xer, is it hard <laughs> for you to relate to a baby boomer like your yeah, husband? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of like the way he talks and thinks. Mm -hmm. He's, no, I'm just Do you ever kidding. say, hey, tell me, what was Camelot like? Yeah, right. did, did you have TV when you were growing up? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be old, 60. 60. <laughs> but he looks good. Yeah. Remember? I like him. So yeah. it's like, I oh, understand. you're cute. I'm look sure he won't mind short. you saying you look good for yeah, a 60-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have to take a quick break, but stick around. We'll be right back with more of the star of Waffles and Mochi on Netflix, Michelle Obama.